Hey van lovers, it's Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com and husband Roger here with another van update. Progress? Yes or no? What? What's the no? How dare you? <laughs> okay, we actually did make some progress this week. Um, or is it two weeks? What do you mean I, actually? We should start this video over. <laughs> no way! We, we are famous for one step forward, two steps back. Two steps forward, one step back. Sure, if that's how you see it. Well, if you think this is an argument, wait till the end of the video when I tell her something that might set her off. Uh-oh, or we start talking about Roger's shop you know, safety. Well, okay, that's gonna happen. But I'm seriously, and she doesn't know this yet, seriously gonna drop something on her at the end of this video uh -oh. that might, yeah, so we'll see how that goes over. Okay, might have to do some creative editing. Um, so we, when we brought you our last video, we were planning to work ahead on our, um, sink and propane stove cabinet and since that is going right pretty much where roger's head is right here uh you can see that we haven't done that that did not happen this week but that's okay because we got to a bunch of other things um yeah which have been really positive yeah and positive and negative uh that's a joke about having to do with the electrical system that's a promo coming okay. soon <laughs> no but you know what the, the funny thing is is that like we hit a major stumbling block right and um, the last, you know, kind of the, the, the task list that we had ahead of us was, let's get the roof rack installed, let's get the solar panels installed, and then, you know, we'll, we'll basically be done with the exterior of the vehicle, other than the shore power, but that's not gonna be a major issue. Um, but we ran into a, a major problem with the, the roof rack install. And, you know, um, it's just sort of like, again, I talk about go with the flow and I talk about like, you don't know what you don't know till you know you don't know it, but I uh, got up on the roof and, you know, did what I thought was the, the, the first part of the roof rack install and then realized that there's a huge problem. So I'm going to go inside and I've got like a prop. A little, <laughs> a prop and, and some demonstration. Yeah, that'll help understand this. And the very interesting way that we solved it with um, one of the most Canadian inventions of all time. One of the most frustrating things about doing your van is that nothing's just gonna work. Well, not everything's just gonna like work like you imagine it. At least that's the case with me all the time. Maybe you're different and maybe I just have to figure out three wrong ways to do something before I get it right. Um, but I just wanted to show you something and we're putting a roof rack on the Ford Transit van right now and we're doing that so that we can put some solar panels up there. So uh, the thing that I discovered immediately after I put the, the racks on is that the van's roof is not flat. Obviously it's got a little bit of an arch to it. Now we're making our own rack out of Unistrut. Unistrut's a great material, it's cheap. Uh, as far as I can tell, it's uh, pretty rust proof and it's uh, easily available, it's widely available. So it's a great material to make your roof rack with and it's got these like U channels, right? So I'm, I'm kind of using these, uh, what would these be, Aaron? These are like lawn garden fabric, stakes. garden stakes. I'm using these to sort of exaggerate that U-shaped channel. And of course the orange rod here is the, the roof of the van. Now it would be awesome if once I just installed the side rails, if these U-shapes were straight up in the air and that way putting a cross piece on would just come together naturally. But unfortunately what happens because the roof is curved, right? You don't, can you see how it angles the U uh, channel and because of that angle in the U channel, you can't just put a flat piece across. So you got to figure out a way so that you can get these U channels put up so that they're on the correct angle. And uh, that kind of kept me up at night. But here's the solution that I came up with. And it's very, very Canadian. <laughs> and it's cheap. So to Canadian Tire, to buy a hockey puck for $1.50. Interestingly enough, made in Slovakia. <laughs> this hockey puck is one inch wide, right? One inch thick, three inches, one by three. Every Canadian should know that. And here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this on the diagonal. So I basically use a triangle calculator to figure out that you need an 18 and a half degree uh, angle. Cut through this and you'll get, you know, two halves that'll look basically like that. And what you can do with these two halves now is you can position them on top of the van and just rotate them until you get the right angle. So this will basically be this galvanized rubber pad that I have underneath the U-channel, the Unistrut, and it's gonna help me get the angle correct so that when I want to, I'll, I'll be able to just put a, a brace right across and have you know, a proper contact. So let's go to the bandsaw and cut a hockey puck 
in half on the diagonal. So this is my um, hockey puck jig, I guess we'll call it that. Um, so this is the 18 degree angle, right? Does that make sense? So if you have a hockey puck, think about it as a rectangle instead of as a square, right? And you're going to cut it along the hypotenuse, right? So, hypotenuse. Yeah. So like, <laughs> this is great, Adele. Would this be great 10 mathematics? So think, yeah, think about it as a rectangle, right? So it's three inches by one inch. So that's three squared is nine and one squared is one. So the square root of 10, you basically figure out that you're going to end up with an 18 degree angle here. So uh, the only thing that's important is that this hockey puck, and I've already cut all these, it's just that it has to kind of sit in a channel because it is round. So it has to kind of have two points of contact instead of one. It can't just sit on this, otherwise it'll roll around, right? So you have to make this channel here. So you have the two points of contact for the, uh, for the round surface. But what you end up doing is, um, you know, you, you just hold it, I pinch it here and pinch it here and, you know, make sure that my fingers are a good margin of safety away from the blade and then just kind of run the sled right through along the fence on the bandsaw. Now, as my man Norm Abrams would say, make sure that you read, follow, and understand the instructions that come with your machinery. And don't forget this most important safety tip of all is to wear these safety glasses. So I have to say, I think that was such a smart solution. And the fact that like you think of this stuff and you're actually calculating the hypotenuse of things and that's just how you operate is so impressive. I, my brain doesn't work like that. So when people's brains do work like that, I am just blown away. It, it actually turned out to be like a, a sort of easy solution mm -hmm. because you'd think that you'd cut the pucks at an angle or you know cut up a, a block at an angle. And by the way, I'm sure there's a product out there you can buy that I didn't find. So if you know of one, <laughs> right. you know, put yeah. it, link it in the comments. Put it down uh, there yeah. for sure. But, um, I just tried to figure out like, well, you, you know, you want the material to be something like rubber or really high density foam. Um, yeah. And so that just sort of seemed to be the easiest thing, but to cut an angle off the puck, mm -hmm. you'd have to be very precise and it might, it probably wouldn't work, but to do it the way that I did it, um, it allows you to sort of control that angle and, and yeah. it's adjustable. So it's, it gives you the ability to adjust the angles while you're, while you're putting it all up there. Yeah. And you know, it's on the roof now and it's, it's fine. We've got a positive, you know, contact, if you will, um, on all four hockey pucks and it's, it's squared up the entire rig. Yeah. And that's, um, that's a great thing. We uh, went with Renogy for the solar panels again this time as we did on our last van. Um, but we put in three this time instead of two and it's going to give us a little bit more power. I think it's going to be basically keep the batteries fuller we also got two batteries instead of one which we can talk about yeah so. and it's it's sort of a thing too about like you know maximizing the space on the roof right so you know that we've got the fan up there and we've got the air conditioning unit up there too but to have 300 watts of solar because we had the capacity for it and so that you know as you see is is three 20 inch panels wide um it's not so wide that it's it's you know going up out the sides of the mm -hmm. van but right. It is uh, filling the space on the roof that is kind of designed for the, for the solar aspect of it. The other progress we made this week was on what you can see right there. Uh, I got started on the tile and this is actually a really cool product. It's basically like hard, but sort of flexible uh, peel and stick faux tile. So it's not as thin as a sticker. It's got some thickness to it, I guess, it's probably about two or three millimeters thick and gives it a little bit more of a look like regular tile. So I'm actually really happy with how it came together. We got a little bit of a herringbone pattern in sort of a marble look. Can I see that again? Yeah, we'll sure. give them a closer look. And you know, you can cut it. I cut it with, um, I started trying to cut it with an X-Acto knife and that just was not working. Um, it's too almost spongy for that. That's the protective filter. I wasn't ready to remove that. Oh, yet. it's causing a glare. Oh, oh terrible glare. I want to give the real feel. There we go. So uh, I went to cutting it with just kitchen scissors, sharp scissors, and that actually works quite well. So I'll finish that off uh, after we shoot this video here, and that's going to look really great. We're really happy with how that came together. In case you saw our last video, and where we talked about sort of the cabinets in behind us here, you might be wondering what happened to the fridge and what happened to the other cabinet. 
Great question. Bodger is going <laughs> to fill you in. Uh, yeah, so the fridge is an easy one. We just haven't wired the AC for it yet. So just took the fridge out in the meantime, but we know that it fits that space. When the AC is wired in there, we'll just drop the lines in and connect it. It's no problem at all. Uh, but the other cabinet, um, it actually sits back from this, you know, larger, taller um, closet, if you will. Um, so because this one's about four inches proud of the drawer cabinet, uh, you can see it, right? You can see the side of it and we didn't paint it from floor to ceiling. So I uh, have to go back. We took the uh, drawer cabinet out there so we could finish painting it up. And right. Just a, a slight cosmetic thing, but you know, because your van's modular, right? It's, it's not a pain yeah. in the butt to take stuff out, put it back in a little bit later on. And once we get this cabinet in here that Aaron referenced earlier on, the one with the sink and the uh, propane uh, yeah. hob in it, um, then it'll be a little bit more difficult to, to be, you know, removing modules, but um, yeah, no big deal. They should still come apart. Yeah. The other thing that made taking the drawer cabinet out a good decision is that we actually do have to take this cabinet out because um, I want the tile to sort of go back behind that. I'd rather not sort of trim the tile to just trying to butt up against it. I want to actually tuck it behind that cabinet. And so we're just going to pull it out so that I can get a, a piece of the tile back there. So it's going to look really, really finished, I think, more so than trying to cut and cut and piece it together would. Oh, yeah, it's going to look muy, muy bien. <laughs> the other thing we did this week is we got the bed platform installed. We cut pieces of, is that one by five? Those are six foot cedar fence boards. So they'll be, uh, what would that be, three quarters of an inch by five and a half inches. Oh, just when I think I've got some of these worked out. What yeah, else? So what else did we do? Well, that's pretty big. You know, getting the solar panels put up on the roof is, is a pretty big lift. And then you've been, like, this is some pretty intricate work that is, is time consuming and takes some time. So uh, once that's all done, yeah, we're going to put the panel, uh, the uh, cabinets back in place. We'll install the fridge and we're going to start to build the electrical into it. And I'm thinking about moving the batteries into the back garage area rather than having them up front here and thereby giving you back. <laughs> Are you seriously? I was thinking about yes. it. Yes. I would love that. Okay. So would you this, really like that? Well, I would like that because it would give us more storage here. But this, this is funny. So. I can't remember if we've let the viewers in on this or not, but we fought about this. I did not want all that stuff up here, but Roger made a really great case, which we I know we did discuss, for having the shorter battery cable run um, to the battery, which is under the driver's seat. So this is, okay, this is interesting. We're gonna have to talk more about this in the next video. I no, I, I don't, well. Unless it just happens and we'll just show you. No, I'll just tell you what my reasoning is. Go for Rather it. than make you wait until... You're going to watch <laughs> the next video anyway, but... We hope. We hope. So we have two, you know, uh, basically like 100 amp hour batteries. And we, we've also got a 3000 watt inverter charger. And those three units combined are probably... Are close to 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. So 200 pounds behind the driver's seat. And if... I'm driving as another 160 in the driver's seat. You know, we're just gonna have so much of the weight of the vehicle up on the front left. And that was actually starting to concern me a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And the fridge is on top of, of those too. So there's just a lot of mass going on over here. Uh, where I'm sitting will have a lot of water weight, but really only five to 10 gallons at a time. Um, but I just, I was kind of getting concerned about having too much stuff up in the front left corner of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. Uh, we did we did try and account for that and we did talk about it and yeah. kind of thought we had it worked out. So I'm, I'm well, interested to hear that. But here's the second part of it. And this is like really, really important. When you start to go get your cables for your batteries and your electrical runs and stuff like that, particularly if you're running a high watt inverter, then you're going to be into really, really expensive cable. And um, the thing that we're wrestling with right now is, you know, this 3000 watt inverter charger, the question is, can we use it just as a charger? We want to be able to charge mm -hmm. the battery when we're hooked up to shore power. Yep. This device does that, but also operates as a very heavy duty inverter. In order for it to be an inverter, we would need four aught cable. A four aught cable is very thick gauge. Right. It's very, very expensive. Well, it's like this, probably the size of your pinky, isn't it? Like that's heavy wire. Oh, it's much. Do you want me to go grab a slice of it? If, no, watch you'll this. Never, no, no, hang no, on no, a second. No, no, you don't watch. because you'll never find it. No, no, watch this. You'll never find it. The sh Rogers. <laughs> that was meant to be a cut. While he's doing that, we'll see if this happens. Because this is my other, this is our other fight that we've had, which is Rogers, oh my God, I can't believe we found it. Um, 
Roger's shop. It, it is your shop. I mean, we both work in it, but it is a disaster. It is a safety hazard. We're going to talk about that a little more, but there's there's your four aught cable. Okay, so that's like so thicker that's, than my thumb. Yeah, so that's four aught cable. And in Europe, um, you'll know the square millimeter measurement of this, but um, this is a uh, flexible. So this is welder's cable, right? And you want to buy the multi-strand cable. And I'll actually talk about that in the next video because if you're unsure about the cables that you're buying, um, that'll be really, really helpful. I, I, I wasted a lot of money on cable in the first fan that we did. But here's my point is that this is really expensive to, to buy by the foot. And so the, the initial reasoning why I wanted the mm -hmm. batteries behind the driver's seat is because shorter I didn't run. want, yeah, I want to have a shorter run of thicker cable. Yeah. But if, because the inverter is now placed over basically over the passenger rear wheel, um, that would mean that we would have to run a lot of this four aught cable all the way back from the, uh, the batteries to the inverter charge and um, uh -huh. I don't want to do that. Um, so if you're cool with it, we'll put the batteries back there and then we can run a really short run of four aught cable in between the batteries and the inverter charger. I can get on board with that. Now, also I think by our next video, we should talk about cleaning up the shop because it's a safety hazard. It's not an issue. It's not a concern. <laughs> do, do you see any injured YouTubers here? <laughs> not. Can you see my can you see my legs? Do I have both of them? <laughs> you can't be sure. No, you you get busy and you don't concern yourself with the workspace. You just sort of toss things back in there and then we'll go a couple weeks of things just sort of getting piled on other things and then okay. we clean it up and then But this is a van life video and so <laughs> we should be talking about the van and really nothing else. This has been really productive. We got the solar panels installed, did some painting. You're doing a great yeah. job with the tile. We resolved a marital conflict. I don't know what the issue is. Oh, well, we could resolve two marital conflicts <laughs> with the safety issue. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, if you guys want to read more about the van, I've been really lazy about it, um, but we're going to try and get some more content up on techgadgetscanada.com. You can post any questions you have for us about this build or comments, or you can weigh in on shop safety or 4 cable here in the comments below. Um, we hope to see you guys again in a couple of weeks with a brand new video with even more progress. Until the next time, you can catch me on Twitter or Instagram. I'm at Erin L-Y-Y-C. You can also always find me at facebook.com slash Canada.